Hey there, it's Pete over at The Samplist, and today we are checking out British Drama Toolkit Brass and Reeds by Spitfire Audio. Featuring a large variety of brass and reed solo instruments, ensembles and combis, Spitfire Audio have once again teamed up with award-winning composer Samuel Sim to create an evocative, inspiring and expressive new entry of the British Drama Toolkit. The library downloads at 8GB and runs in the Spitfire Audio dedicated plugin. It is NKS compatible and is currently on sale for £129 during the introduction period. After this period is over, it will be £169. In this video, I'm going to do an overview of the instrument itself and play through some of the 99 presets it contains. And then I have put the British Drama Toolkit Brass and Reeds into a composition. So we're going to check out how it is to compose with and what are our thoughts about that. So let's jump straight in. And here we have the British Drama Toolkit Brass and Reeds. And you'll notice while this is a Spitfire Audio dedicated plugin instrument, I've loaded this up in complete control using the NKS. And there is a reason for that, but I will explain that later. If we go to the top, we can see we have combis, which are already loaded, and then we have brass, reeds, recorders, and saxophones. And within each of those categories, there are plenty of different instruments and then further articulations for all of these. So we're going to get to those in a little while, but it's important to understand how the instrument works. It's all based upon velocity. If I play the instrument really, really softly, you get a texture. And that texture isn't just a sustained note, it's got sort of uh, notes being played uh, several times and it's got movement and life. If I play a little bit harder and try and get into the soft. It's a lot more powerful. And then if I really hammer it and go loud. It's more powerful and obviously it's louder. So you get this idea where you can play some textures in your left hand and then play some melodies over the top. Now, the reason I've loaded this in complete control is that all of my velocity settings are within um, complete control. So it's really cool they translate over. So I'm gonna try and play something um, which isn't sort of jumping around too much with texture and melody. Okay, so you get the idea of how it works. And if you use the original British drama toolkit, that is the same principle. However, because this is now in the Spitfire audio player, you have far more control while you're playing live. So I found with the mod wheel, if I crank the mod wheel all the way up, you get the um, higher velocity. And uh, so you can play the louder parts easier. In fact, I'm playing really softly there and you get that. And if I go about halfway down, And the more that you use the instrument, the more you get used to sort of 
delicately moving the mod wheel, even though it's got a different function now, and playing the notes that you want to. So it has got a small learning curve, but I'll be honest, within 15 minutes, I was sort of quite happy doing that. And of course, when you compose, you get ultra con uh, controlled, you can change with the velocity values. So it's nice and straightforward, really. Now that's a brass and reeds. Let's hear the brass and oboe. So I'll fall into the trap right now of sort of riding that mod wheel a little bit too much. Let's hear the brass and the core on anglais. Okay, so like I say, you've got to get used to it, but it sounds incredible. And you can just make entire cues from one instrument if you want to. Um, so we've got the brass and alto sax. <laughs> And then we've got the reeds and the flugelhorn. Reeds and saxes. It's just, you know, it's beautiful. And it's something really different and creative. And they got the saxes and flugelhorn. Um, I'm just going to the next page. Uh, I'm not going to play through all of these, but you can see you've got lots of, um, you know, just brilliant textures to work with or different solo instruments on top. And then just going into the uh, controls here, really, really straightforward. There's only two microphone settings, You've got close and tree. So if you want to just have the close. <laughs> Or you can have 
just the tree mic. And then we've got attack. Which again is really, really useful because it does take some getting used to. And sometimes I might be a little bit overzealous with the velocity. And just sort of softening the attack is a good way around that. Whoops. Of course, I'm overemphasizing it there, but yeah. Um, so really, really great function. And obviously you can have long releases. Just keep that going. And then we have reverbs as well. I can change the type as well, so uh, plenty of different reverbs to go through. And that is the instrument controls. You obviously have your um, expression there, and then getting used to using the mod wheel. So I'm going to obviously play through some of the instruments, but it's a really, really curious uh, library because yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve and it's really important that I do state that. So um, not not to be, it shouldn't put you off because it sort of brings out more creativity, if that makes sense. So that, that's my feeling in a way. And I find the instrument really, really inspiring. And of course, I'm just demoing it at the moment. When you use it in a com uh, composing situation, you got that level of control and you can just go back and read jigs like things. It's really, really straightforward to use. Now let's go through a couple of different instruments. So brass ensemble, we've heard a fair bit of. If I go to the tuba. <laughs> in fact, what I'm going to do is just um, reload the plugin really quick. You can also see it's got a very small footprint as well, uh, which is very, very uh, great to see. Um, so, yeah. And then if I go to the um, bass and tenor trombone. I felt like I loaded the tuba, but no, I didn't. I loaded the bass and trombone. Now, underneath, you can see you've got different articulations, and these are really, really cool, so it gets even more creative. You've got the longs, which is what we've been working with mainly. If you want to take off the top layer, you can just have texture. Texture and soft. So that's ideal if you're doing underscore or there's dialogue going on. Then you've got multiphonics and these sound ace. Very cool. Then you've got chatter, which is short. But if you start playing. You can create a chatter effect. Then you've got layered chatter. Um, performance. So that, even at the lowest settings, it's quite difficult to get down to the texture. So this is geared towards more solo lines. Brassy performance. And rounded short. So let's play those 
So you can hear it's a, a short note at the Ks, and then we've got brassy short. Very, very cool. So that's just the tuba. Uh, if I play through the um, bass and tenor trombone. Um, and you hear there are some different um, articulations. So there's a swell, you've got a long sport Sunday. Play the tenor horn. Do the performance. And right, let's do uh, brassy short. And then flugelhorn instantly became um, something I was drawn to in this instrument. Bit of uh, discord playing there. Um, let's just do swell. It's absolutely great. Uh, let's go to the double read ensemble. Let's go bring up the volume. Again, absolutely gorgeous. Um, let's go for the contrabass bassoon. Do some swells. So there are just some gorgeous sounds going on. Cor anglais. Rounded shorts. And then got the oboe. Let's play soft. And then we've got the recorder ensemble. Let's go and change octave there. Um, you've got flutters going on with these.
Let's go bring down the volume slightly. I got Chiff as well. Uh, bend vibrato. Very cool effect. Um, let's do layered flutter. Okay, and then we've got uh, the saxophone ensemble. saxophone and then alto sax which is our last instrument And different articulation, got a growl. And there we go. So really to summarise my initial thoughts when I started playing through the library. First of all, um, the British Drama Toolkit was the first Spitfire library I ever bought many, many years ago. And I just loved the unpredictable nature of the sound and the character it gave you. And the uh, British Drama Toolkit, Brass and Reads, does exactly that straight away. So it's a great addition if you enjoyed that library. Now, it's something different and it's very, very creative. And it's one of those libraries, once you start using it and playing with it, and like I say, getting past that um, learning curve, which is, again is very, very short. It's just about understanding the instrument. Um, it's really, really fun and different to compose with. Now, I've made a composition where I've got a lot more control so if I do make a mistake with velocity, I can adjust that in the MIDI or I can use different layers. So I'm using my left hand only to play some chords and do more melodies on the right hand. Um, so when you're using it to compose with, in terms of control, it's absolutely incredible. So my first impressions are uh, it's different. Um, it's really, really fun to use. The sampling is great. They're, you know, unique performances, and there's not really another instrument quite like it. But I think a big advancement is Spitfire Audio putting it into their own plugin because now you have more control using the mod wheel as I'm wiggling around there. So, what we're going to do is check out the composition and talk about what it's like to compose with. <laughs>
Now this is where it starts to get really, really tricky, trying to put that composing experience into words. I'm going to try and sum it up with just, yeah, fantastic. I really, really enjoyed my composing session. And in the previous section of the video where I was, you know, trying to make sure I was hitting the correct velocities because I was demoing the instrument live, when you start composing with it, it just becomes really, really natural and really rewarding. And if you miss the velocity ever so slightly, of course, you can just adjust it. But I felt as I went on composing with it, I played all these parts in live and I didn't really have to adjust much. So obviously I said there's a very small learning curve and getting used to it, but really that just evaporated when I started composing. Now, the other thing is I didn't really know exactly the sounds I was looking for. So obviously I've I've chosen, you know, alto sax, um, tenor horn, etc. And I know what they sound like, but I don't know what these performances are like until you start playing them. And they are just magical to work with. You don't know what's going to happen and what they're going to sound like. But once you get them into your DAW and you start arranging your instruments, yeah, it just adds a different dimension, a, a level of life and organic human playing that you just don't get by, you know, using regular instruments to sample with. So yeah, I'm totally blown away and I'm going to go through the composition very, very quickly. Now I've gone to two of my um, old classics as they were. I love the Olafur piano. The Olafur toolkit is absolutely amazing and I do use the kalimba in there. Um, quite a bit as a bit of a doubling secret weapon. And then Phobos. BT Phobos is just, you know, one of my Desert Island libraries. And I'm only using the rhythm section for this or, you know, the loops, but it's great. Now, I wanted to start off with um, a nice sort of piano underscore. So I'm just going to play it from the start. And then on the bassoon, bring in a, a sort of octave idea. In fact, let's just sort of go a bit bigger. Um, and then have a small melody on the alto sax. So I'm just going to play those two bits. And it's instant atmosphere. And it, it just sounds a little bit sort of film noir, um, but a sort of, <laughs> I was going to say modern version. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you just put that with the piano. And then the brass and reeds come in playing a uh, texture. And I did add uh, a phobus, just like sort of a bit of a boom. A really simple opening section and I love how melodic the instruments are while still maintaining their character. So this alto sax playing a, a counter melody. And I'll double that with the contrabass uh, contrabass bassoon and you can see just going into the midi we've got left hand playing the texture down the bottom and then we've got the right hand uh, playing the melody that is doubled and I love that you can just you know I don't have to do two separate tracks so I can just throw that in there um, so that's really really cool very much enjoy anything that makes the composing process easier 
And then we've got the second section, and it's where the tenor horn comes in. Absolutely love this brass. So I'm just going to play from the end of there. And of course, we've got the oboe playing as a soloist, a counter melody at this point. So I'm just going to solo the British Drama Toolkit. The vibrato is absolutely stunning, but you'll notice on the um, texture down here, there's a pause and a re-blow of the note. And I, I would never think in a composition to do that. I just sort of like smash down some chords and sustain notes and move on. And that's the thing. It's, um, it's just taking your compositions into new directions. So completely happy with that. And then... Um, final section. Still got the brass and reeds because that texture was just perfect for the whole track. Um, piano goes higher and I'm just going to play uh, or use the flugelhorn and the alto sax to play not exactly the same. Um, there's a little bit of harmony there but I love this flugelhorn. So again I'm just going to play the end. Oh and I always find if you're hitting a four chord uh, and doing like a bit of a build up that is a great time to throw Phobos in. So I've gone from the light beta to adding a bit more of a, a thicker rhythm. And that just feels, I don't know, like it's just, it's gonna go somewhere. And where it's going is the third part. So again, slightly different. It's absolutely mesmerizing. Now, I experimented a little bit. So on the flugelhorn, I decided to play on the grid completely. And um, I found that about a minus 70 milliseconds um, was good just to get everything completely in time. But the alto sax, I'm um, not quite on the grid. I don't like composing on the grid, but it's worth just checking out roughly what times are. But if you do compose on the grid, and sometimes I do for speed, um, yeah, just really simple adjustment on your track with a bit of negative delay. Piano part um, fits beautifully with the underscore from the British drama toolkit. Sorry, the uh, texture. <laughs> And if you do use the felt piano from the LFR uh, toolkit, the kalimba um, is just fantastic to double uh, the piano part. So it's just something that I enjoy. But you can hear the um, British Drum toolkit. That, that is just all the underscore, the foundation, the 
you know, the sort of low parts that you need. And then adding the alto sax and the flugel horn together. <laughs> It's absolutely stunning and really um, maybe I have managed to sum it over to words but I'm, I'm really blown away by this instrument and the creativity. So my closing thoughts, um, do I recommend the British Drama Toolkit Brass and Reeds combination? I 100% do. It's just amazing to compose with and it's it's something completely different and I was talking about instruments being tools or toolkits to create a sound now I could never using regular MIDI instruments for example get sounds like this um, they're human performances and Samuel Sim absolutely wonderful um, I use the Chrysalis harp library a lot again I bought that in my early days of Spitfire and it's something that I used last week you know it's uh, they stand the test of time and this edition of the British Dharma Toolkit will do exactly the same so it's inspiring it's different it sort of gets you out of your comfort zone and I know you know I'm playing simple chord progressions when I do these demos I like to show you more simplicity as opposed to you know really complex orchestration or writing because you get the essence of what the instruments really sound like and in a mix working with other instruments in tandem it's amazing but it's just like say adding textures and melodies and instruments and timbres that you're just not going to get elsewhere and then you get these unexpected moments of pauses or texture or movement and it just really adds to the character of your compositions. I think it's a fantastic library and after my initial sort of demoing the reward from just going through like 10-15 minutes of just practicing your velocities a little bit or setting your controller you're rewarded with a gorgeous instrument to make beautiful music with. There we go, I managed to get into words. If you like what you heard, feel free to leave a like on the video. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Spitfire. Just thank you so much for sending this library over to us uh, to make this video. It's just been a pleasure working with it. If you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. Our content is rapidly growing and then head over to thesamplist.com to see what's going on in the world of virtual instruments until next time of course as ever keep on making that music and we will speak again soon take care and thank you so much for watching